one. Hey, girl. Hey. So I got a story for you, girl. Got two cool. stories Let's for you, girl. All right. I can't wait. Let me put in my halls to get ready for this, though. Got to yeah, put in my halls. Got to put, put, my, hall put in my there. halls. Get your halls in your mouth. Get your halls in your mouth. What? What? So, girl, as you may or may not remember, I had vertigo last night. Yes, no, I, you, you told me. I was Dear very listeners, I, I have, I have vertigo every once in a while. It doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while I have vertigo. And there's an exercise you have to do that makes you look like a crazy person. Like you turn your head to the side and your eyes start twitching. That's something that you have vertigo, if you didn't know. I had no idea. I just saw the movie. The, mm. No. So if you're laying flat on your back and you turn your head <laughs> 45 degrees uh-huh. above the pillow uh-huh. <clears throat> and your eyes start twitching, uh-huh. that's a sign that you have vertigo. Oh, okay. Anyway, so I did my exercises, and I took a boning, which is which is a motion sickness pill, and it it, it helps with uh, vertigo. It okay. helps it helps get rid of the thing. Okay, well, girl, I had one of those tonight. Mm-hmm. A, a boning. I, I take I take it for like seven days after. Okay. Um, but what I forgot was, I also had some Mexican fresca with some tequila in it. Oh no, girl! It's it's an antihistamine and some alcohol. Um, I'm feeling right right now. Let me tell you, <laughs> this is gonna be a very special episode of you dear, me, dear listeners. I apologize to you in advance for the nonsense that's going to come out of my mouth by the end of this. Wait, oh my gosh! This is actually, girl. You know what? I have three stories more for you. Three more stories. So I went to go get my dry clean today. As you do. And the dear sweet, well, well I, I get my button-up shirts dry clean because they're easy. Uh, I can't press them very well. Of course you do. Well, it's not that expensive and I can't iron. All right. <laughs> so I went in there and girl, if if the dear sweet woman who worked there didn't say, I didn't get my breakfast this morning. Like, Lord, what is this breakfast that's just being thrown at me? Girl, she got she got a three piece uh uh chicken snack from uh Bojangles for breakfast because it's a Ooh. little spicy. She likes a little spice in the morning. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm not mad at that at all. Then I went to the Walgreens as one does, <laughs> and as I'm waiting in line, I, I I I'm asked to go to the next checkout. I'm checking out, and I hear from the other checkout. The woman complaining to the uh, to the cashier because she has requested receipts be emailed to her and they have yet to be emailed to her. Stop it! Please and she's stop. like, "Ma'am, I I can't." Well, I have requested this multiple times. Well, ma'am, there's nothing that I can. Well, I have in fact requested this, and I am still not getting the receipts. Oh God! No. Well, would you like to print it out? No, I'd like it emailed to me, please and thank you. I'm like. Mm. I just need to get my aluminum foil and get out of here. Some people have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> but then, girl, when I exited the Walgreens, yes. <laughs> there was a car with a bumper sticker. Okay. The, the bumper sticker was red. Okay. It's a red bumper mm. sticker. In okay. white letters, it said coexist. The X was the Confederate flag. Stop! Stop! To quote my husband, we did it, Joe. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I have seen a lot of things in my day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is Uh something. Yeah, nothing. They put that on their vehicle. On their vehicle, on the back of their... Well, there was also some other Confederate memorial back there, too. Of course there was. Of course oh, there boy. was. It was It was, It was. was a lot. Dear listeners, I'd like to also mention that um, <laughs> after this episode, we're taking a quick little break. We're taking a week uh, off. We're, we're, we're taking a fall break because if kids ha- get it, drag queens do, too. Right. Halloween break. A Halloween break. Mame has one too many things left to sew. I have one too many... 
I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm getting the hell out of town. So that's you going on vacation? I'm going on vacation. Yeah. It is time. It is time for you. Man. It is time. It has been years. It you're has tired. been years. You're old, you're old tired bitch now. It's Speaking of old tired bitches, mame. Did you know that we have a Patreon, dear what? listeners? If you go to <laughs> patreon.com, murmur, bibs a bame, you can throw some money. Hey, mame. Yeah. Did you know that we have another cop podcast? Shut your mouth. I about said cod piece. <laughs> You're still thinking about medieval nights. I am. <laughs> Dear <laughs> listeners, if you search for baking sugar, it's our designing women podcast. <laughs> hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have merchandise? <laughs> if you go to mimsababe.com, you can buy a shirt or other things that, that escape me right now. And dear listeners, we'd like to thank you for your patronage. If you would like to like and subscribe and please leave us reviews, that would just make our day, wouldn't it, Mame? It would, and I need my day made. <laughs> she, she needs it made so hard. So hard, So y'all. much. So hard in this... Are you cold up there, by the way? I mean, it's 39 degrees. Is that cold? I mean, to some people, yes, that would be cold. I mean, to your eyes, it's cold. This is Season 2, Episode 13, Trial by Error. Girl, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't either, but I felt offended still. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> it felt right to be offended. What color are your lips? Uh, they're called. It's called birthday cake. What color is it though? Like it's like a blue. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm like, I, is, uh, because birthday cake, I th- cake, I think white or pink, not blue. I don't know why. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I had the same question. Um. But, oh, it's not birthday cake. It's called birthday babe. Okay. I thought it was birthday cake. It was birthday babe. Who who makes it? I like the color. Maybe it's Maybelline. Well, there's a car wreck, babe. (laughs) And for once, it's not either of our faces. I know. Mine is a concentrating wreck. (laughs) Oh, no. It's my Porsche from 1980 that my father was supposed to give me. (laughs) I forgot about that Porsche. (laughs) Dad. Dear yeah. listeners, my father liked old cars. He had a British. Here's one that may may not even know. Back before the Porsche, he had a 1960s British racer Sunbeam in what? British green. Beautiful, I didn't, I, beautiful I didn't little car. That. Well, he sold wow. that, and they got a Porsche, and the Porsche was supposed to be my first car. Yes, it was. Shit brown. Or it wasn't shit brown, but it was it was brown, sparkly brown, which was all the rage at the time. He got it repainted this weird red color. Um but during the divorce he just took it. Yes. Didn't yeah. somebody else get it? No, I, I let people believe that he did. <laughs> you know, that rumor started and I just didn't want to correct them. <laughs> I hate you, right? Because <laughs> it sounds like something my dad would do, so I'm like, you know Stuff what? Because like, I started having really, like these stuff, like started like memories started rushing back. I was like, wait a minute, mm-hmm, yeah, girl. yeah, no, no, girl, girl, no, I just, I just, it was a completely girl. different Porsche. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't with you right now. <laughs> Oh, the lies that are told. The lies, Kenny. Yes. Anyway, they, they, they've they've got they've got the uh, jaws of life out. Oh, hey! I love the, I love that sequel. Girl, I've got a story about that too. I have a friend. 
<laughs> who used to drive a Dodge Dart, okay? I'm so sorry for your She friend. was driving up through Allison's Woods, just north of just north of Iredell, just north of States, one Iredell County. This is the most North Carolina story yet. She fell asleep. Stop. What? And flipped her car. <gasps> they she was okay. They had to get the jaws of life out. It's safer. Wow. Her father was like, the Dodge Dart is the safest car ever. I'm getting you another one. Got her another Dodge Dart. Same year, same color. Year later, same place, same thing happened. Stop it. Kid you not flipped over. She was fine. The 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 people came out and were like, use the Jaws Life, get her out. Do- Dad bought her a third Dodge Dart. Did it happen again? Please mm-hmm. tell me. You've got to be joking me. The, the last time was the last time was trying to miss a deer, but still flipped over. I feel Dodge like start safest car out there. Safest car. I feel yes. I that or she really hated Dodge darts and it was trying be. to get a different car. It could be. <laughs> People have gone to greater lengths to get rid of their Dodge darts. Well, we found out that the the woman did not never wore seatbelt. This man is outside frantic. He's like, she never wore seatbelt. She never wore seatbelt. Then, then Vicky Lawrence's name comes up on the screen. And that's all I cared about. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is it. So the woman is being pulled on a gurney into the ambulance and she screams, why? Why? And he just says he swerved to avoid a biker at like 10 p.m. Yeah. And so not now, like a biker biker, like a boy child, on a bike. A yeah. child on a bike. I have a I have a story about that too. My God, I'm just full. Of, this alcohol boning maybe like. I know, girl. I know. Back 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 with my aunt. If I'm telling too many stories, let me know. I love it. I, I'm I'm watching the time too, so we don't get too crazy. Back back when I was I was driving along with my aunt, um, in the country north in Statesville, um, and th- there was a kid on a bike. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my, my 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 aunt was just driving, and the kid came up beside and swerved into the car, and like my aunt heard a thud. She thought she had killed this boy, like because he had swerved, like pu- literally pulled up beside of us and swerved in. Right, like we had already passed him. He and we were going like five miles, ten miles an hour down this residential neighborhood, and then all he could say was. My bike, my bike. He was fine, just standing there. My bike, my bike, my bike. Girl, that bike was dead. Luckily, he wasn't. Lord have mercy. And he, he, oh Lord, it was a mess. It was. I can just see your eye. <laughs> <right now. laughs> I can see her just as clear as day, looking over it. Yeah, like at his his white parents showed up. <laughs> Not the white bit. Well, he, 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 he was. It was a Webster situation. <laughs> Some people aren't going to get that reference, but I do. <laughs> he was a forty-year-old man. <laughs> be done with this episode and this has been an episode of you slay me <laughs> anyway we're at the hospital and we find out that this man had fractured his collarbone okay oh no and he was a bloody nasty mess his name is mr reynolds hello the wife may survive but she'll never walk again no but she was so pretty so we, he leaves he leaves and he's like, you know, I can't be here. I can't because I try. I, I I almost killed her. I can't be here. So he goes to a bar. Um, and a woman cleans him up. Like he goes to the other side of the bar, and there's this woman there, and she's like, "Give me a rag and some, you know, antiseptic, some betadine, I guess." Palm olive. <laughs> Palm olive. It was eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Dear listeners, I just showed back in the eighties the the the, the, the thing was showing their showing their fingers to show that it wasn't like 
No uh, more dish pan dry. hands. God. I love the small palm olive. I really do. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's so weird. It's it's one of those eighty smells. Anyway, I um I was uh I was one of those kids. I kept trying to get my mom to get it because of the commercial, uh-huh. and and she was never gonna not use Dawn. I mean, yeah, Dawn's <laughs> had... better. Well, no, I know, but back then when you're a kid and you watch uh-huh. these commercials, you're like, Mom, you should get that one. <laughs> and like, we we that. used it at one of our labs because it's a lot less. Um, we we were rearing insects. It's a lot less like damaging or hurtful than dawn because dawn is Don abrasive hardcore. yes it is I, I i i use i use the seventh generation scented not sponsored oh, oh nice yes, yes. It, it doesn't have a smell oh it barely gets anything clean but it works great <laughs> i'm joking i love it i love it <laughs> oh. i also have to use it to clean my cpap stuff um I keep forgetting you have that. Yeah. I just saw a display for that at, at the CVS. They have a whole CPAP section now. Well, girl, I'm sure they do because there's lots of old fat people down there. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. I literally just thought of you. I was like, oh, my gosh, I should tell him. I should tell, totally tell him. Great. <laughs> you know me. I get excited about weird stuff. I do. Oh, God. So there's a creeper watching them. Whoa. And the waiter goes over to him and's like, "Hey, do you go order something." The creeper's name is Mister Detweiler. Wasn't that the Riddler? I don't know. Let's see here. I think that that was the Riddler, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. Real name from the is... from the sixties. It's like Frank something, right? You Edward Nig- Nigma. No, that's Edward Nigma. That's his real name in the comic book. I mean oh. the actor. Oh, the from, actor from the '60s Batman. Oh, I think that was the actor. I think the that Riddler was the Riddler actor. from the '60s Batman. Jim Carrey. I hate you, right? Right now. Frank Gorsh. No. Whatever the '50s or '60s Batman was. Girl, what? It's it's Frank Gorshin. Okay, I think that was him, but I'm not. I'm not sure now. Yeah. Oh, you meant you meant the yeah. I got you. I was very confused by what you were trying to say. I thought you meant that the name Detweiler was the name of the person, not that it was the actual person. Got it. <laughs> Coexist, Carl. Coexist. <laughs> Barely doing that right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> The woman's name is Becky Anderson. Hey, girl, hey. She looks like a Becky, doesn't she? She does, actually. I was thinking that, too. But she only goes by that with her friend. She's Rebecca in, like, business setting. Mm -hmm. Or in bed. Ooh. Anyway, it's a little bit later. Some time has passed. And we find out that that, um, Mr. Reynolds used to race sports cars. Huh. And Interesting. Becky's like, well, do you want to go get a coffee? <laughs> do you want to go get coffee after hours at an after hours coffee place or my place? This ain't a Waffle House. It's too far north. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they leave. Flapjack. And Detweiler talks to the bartender. He's like, wow, that's a quote unquote sympathy jump if i've ever seen one <laughs> he calls he goes to the payphone and calls willie hey willie who, who's just a fisherman with an accent you say yes this yes. is willie hello willie i'd like to stop for just a quick second to acknowledge sure. that all of this weird stuff is happening apparently in cabot go <laughs> based on this episode yes but in cabot cove or something like that yes right um we we don't we really don't know where we are right now i know i'm just basing it on the premise of the episode it has to take place in this area well no it it could take place you you could you we'll get to that in a second okay you you probably know better about juries than me So, so cliff is staying with him okay hey cliff and he tells him he's going to it tells uh, Detweiler tells Cliff that Becky is going home with a man. What? 
Yes. Apparently, they have been separated. And as he Cliff is leaving the uh, house, he says, I'm going to kill him. <gasps> what? Now we're at a trial. And girl, you could be called to a state trial. Was it a state trial? I would think so. A murder? Yeah. A state, I mean, I don't know how trials work. So I was like, I, I mean, know. you can be called to a county trial. You can be called to a state trial. You can be called to a local trial. Wait, does that mean I got to go to like Tallahassee sometime if I get called for that mess? Yeah, girl. Lord Jesus. Uh, I mean, can I just tell him I'm gay? Just show up and drag. That's tell just I'm a drag and... queen. Your state hates me right now. So I'm Do not going to be. Yes, Do girl. They... Oh my God. I didn't know that. I can't keep are... up with what your state likes and doesn't like. They're trying to like outlaw stuff and they're doing like they do in Texas now. Did you still live there? Yes. I mean, Florida, it's a legitimate question. Because South Florida is not like the rest of the dang state. Um, <laughs> except you're under those same laws. Yeah, the laws aren't getting passed. They're just trying to pass them. Okay. Okay. Besides, you ain't gonna see me performing in front of no children anyway. Anyway, Mark Reynolds killed Cliff. Wait, what? That was a quick uh, jump. Yep. Was it self-defense or not? JB's the foreman. Let's find out. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Twelve angry jurors. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, jurors. At least they're black people in this one. Yes. So we got we're back at the we're back at the jury room. There's yeah, some flirting be Cabot, between can't be in Cabot Cove then. What well, yeah. There's there's some flirting between an old black woman mm-hmm. and the man who I know is Cisco's dad from Star Trek <laughs> Deep Space Nine. Good lord. Are, are so many references. I have noticed about this particular show that uh-huh. that's the one thing that you do recognize or when these people have been in other <laughs> other Star Trek of shows. Of course. Girl, I've seen so much Star Trek. <laughs> what what else is he from? No, I mean he's just a character actor. He did a lot of like I mean <laughs> he did a lot of black stuff. So <laughs> I don't was know. He the, the I don't know. Show? The, I'm sure he guest starred at some point. Because he but... lo- he looked like he looked like he was somebody from the Cosby Show too. But I know it... that he played a professor, but I can't remember if it was on the Cosby Show or on a Different World. But I know he played a professor. Hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, think about it. Almost every black character actor of a certain age was probably on the Cosby show at some point. Do, do, do you know the woman, the black woman who was just sitting there crocheting the entire time? Yeah, I knew her from stuff, too. <laughs> okay. She feels like she, she could have been in touch by an angel one episode, doesn't she? <laughs> I lost my foot. Girl, I can see that. Foot. <laughs> What's Della Reese going to do about that shit? Girl, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Della Reese. Isn't that what that shows? A, isn't that what that shows about? It's always like I something terrible's happened and I lost my faith. All right, yeah, yeah but you thing. said you lost your foot. They can't do. About, oh, they no. can fix faith. They can't do shit about a foot. Look at that snake curled up your leg. Maybe it could be your foot. I don't know. <laughs> We've we've gone too far off. My brain can't handle it right now. Oh, oh man, I would love a touch by an angel where like the things are like weird miracles, like the mir- like they are miracles, but they're weird miracles, right? <laughs> that feels like the episode that Roma Downey just says, "I'm done." Right? I'm just, just like I'm done. like I don't have my foot, and then all of a sudden you wake up the next day and there's like a hand growing down there, and you're like, "I think this is a miracle. or it's a baby foot." Right, <laughs> it has to grow. You're like, <laughs> is that gonna, is that gonna grow? I don't think so. It's been two years. It's still just a baby foot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on to something. I think we're on to something. <laughs> oh, do you think we're on to up for it? Oh, God, oh. what else could she possibly be doing? Oh, oh have you seen Encanto yet? <laughs> You didn't probably hear that there was a record that scratched in the background just now when you said that. Uh, so we find out that one juror's a radio jockey, right? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I think he's I think he's more of a 
not jockey, but like a news person, like like commentator, because yes. this was the time that like th- those those were really getting started. That was the thing, yes. And that's the rest of the story. <laughs> um, so they have a vote to decide how they're going to go with it. All right, this seems pretty easy, right? I mean, this guy's like he's. I mean, there are nine to quit. Okay, two right. guilty, oh. one undecided. What? Mm-hmm. But this has to be a clear cut. Well, self-defense. maybe not. Let's get into it. Oh, okay. So we're going to start with the testimony. This is a very hard episode. To do this stuff for dear listeners because it is. It is not linear. It is at all. It, we're taking bits and pieces. So. I apologize if my um And then it gives you two differing flashback sequences yeah. too. If, if my drugged up ass is not good enough for this, but we'll try I think this is gonna be the greatest episode we ever do. <laughs> so it's well, we're gonna start with the testimony. Mm-hmm. Mark, who is the potentially the killer, seems remorseful. He, he, I just wanted to die. Um, um that doesn't sound right. Uh, Mark, are you okay? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, all right. That's a, I wasn't expecting So the that. DA then cross-examined. Okay. Wh- why did you go to that bar? Was it because Becky was waiting? No, I was I was drunk and I just I, I, I was in the bar for like two hours and then just I went to her place afterwards and. Yeah, but, does anybody, does anybody else hear that voice? It's, it seems too soon for that. Is it, uh, no, it, no, we start off with a murder, so we're, we're going to have a little bit of voice. I, right. think, I think I was high when I wrote these notes, too, because they were making a damn lick of sense. Well, this is not a difficult episode to keep track of, so I'll no, keep you no, on no. track. I'll keep no, you on no, track. We're, we're good. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, we find out that she was, that Becky was separated from Cliff. Right, we knew that part. Um, right? And the the defense attorney said they came in with the Cliff came in, or mm-hmm. sorry, excuse me, Cliff came in. We had okay. a fight over the gun, and I hit him with a poker, and I killed him by accident. Oh, <laughs> that voice still seems Becky, a little bit Becky out of place. Called the cops. Oh, but. But uh, when, when when they took me in, I, d- I did not call for a lawyer. I called the hospital to see my how my wife was doing. Oh, was, that's noble. She did. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, got it. So we're back in the jury room, and Cisco's dad's like, he's lying. He is a lying rich white man. Cisco's dad. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, I just love it. <laughs> <sighs> I'm never gonna be able to watch this episode again and not not see that now. What the Cisco's like, dad? I mean, I don't really. Re- I mean, I remember him on the show, but it's not like it's not like he left an impression on me. So when you say it now, it's like every really? time I watch, he left such an impression on me. Nah, he is he is one of the the best, better a- a guest actors on the show, like. That's saying. That's actually saying. I mean, you know, not saying a lot. Deep Space Nine was a lot. The four, but the four black actors were really good. Well, oh, I love Deep Space Nine. Don't get me wrong. I love three. It. Three of the black actors were really good, and then yeah, there's I, Jake. I love his son. Do you know that his son is now older than he was when he was when he was on the show doing Cisco? Isn't that crazy? That's incredible! I hate you. I just thought that was interesting. Shut up. I hate you. <laughs> Did you know that I'm older than I was yesterday? That's incredible! <laughs> I'm just saying that they're almost he's almost the exact same age now that he than Cisco was then. I think they're like I think they were just doing a story about it the other day. Did like you were... know that I'm the same age? As my mom when she was my age. It's incredible. I'm going to tell you, you, you want something incredible. <laughs> Keep it up. Girl, you cut that crease real hard. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you used a machete. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, plus I had on glasses. I did like what it's one of the ones with glasses. So it was like, that's why I always like made it a little bit more intense. So now we've got Becky's testimony. Okay. Mm -hmm. She had a restraining order against Cliff. Okay. The reason was irreconcilable differences, but he countersued saying she was a hoe. Oh, and then the DA said, "Well, how many times exactly did you sleep with Mark?" That is out of line, right there, Mister DA. That's out Objection. of line. Objection! Objection! Out of line! Out of Objection! Order. That perm is not tight enough. Objection! <laughs> that gets you good. <laughs> <laughs> that verb is not cited though <laughs> oh my gosh so now now we're in the jury room and we find out that the wife had money but he didn't have any oh so he was going to inherit everything if she died oh we also find out that jb was the undecided vote oh Je jessica <laughs> And of course. Vicky Lawrence is a brown noser. She just loves Jessica. I mean, that's kind mm -hmm. of summed up her career. Yep. It's like <sighs> find the find the alpha woman. There's Vicky Lawrence right beside her. So and Vicky really, really wants to go over the testimony from one Fenton Harris hotelier. Yeah. <laughs> Confirmed well, now, bachelor. I, 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 I have this hotel, you see, and it it's I, I it's kind of my job not to recognize people. <laughs> yeah, he has a hotel. Uh, I wonder if it's stationed on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Wait, was was he from Gilligan's Island? That's the skipper. That's the skipper. Yeah, I did recognize him through those huge ass glasses. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Here's something what? really don't do don't do that thing again because this actually is pretty funky. Um, okay. we He's just happened to watch me when I he was forty. I'm not saying it. No, what, what what's what's really funky, girl? It will just happen that he was literally on the episode of Perry Mason I watched last night. Also, <laughs> I'm holding it in, girl. I'm holding it in. I just thought it was you interesting. You and I wrote about this. I just thought it was interesting that those two things happened like within a week of each other, considering that one was at the one was before Gilligan's Island and the other one was after Gilligan's Island. Hmm. I hate you right okay. now. Anyway, he recognized the, Mark. Wait, let me just say this so the audience can understand what's going on right now. So, dear <laughs> listeners, Mims on a good day is a dick. Mims right now, where there is a very small boundary between what he wants to say and what he realizes <laughs> will be crossing the line, it that boundary has gotten blurred by this pill pill combination and alcohol combination. So wow. he's doing everything he can to not be a flaming <laughs> asshole. But girl, if you've never had Mexican fresco, I don't know what that is. It's 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 fresco made with sugar. Instead, instead oh. of aspartame, it's delicious. Okay, but like you, you have to find. It's only Mex. Well, I don't know if it's outside Mexico, but the Mexican grocery stores sell it. It is. Good. Oh well, we got lots of those. Yeah, so. and girl, throw it in there with a little bit of tequila and a little bit of lime. You said a little bit of tequila. Tequila. Oh, you said tequila. I was like, are you shortening tequila now, too? Oh, girl, we grew up with her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I remember her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 I remember her. She was nice. Anyway. She's nice to me. Um, So, uh, what's his name? Fenton recognizes Mark four to six times. That doesn't sound right. Also, he recognizes Becky from one time. She stayed in the car. That also doesn't sound right. I know. So, they're in, they're in the jury room again. And everybody's a little kerfluffled. And there's <laughs> Les Nessman, WKRP <laughs> in Cincinnati. <laughs> uh, no turkeys, though. No turkeys. No, no, no turkeys. No turkeys. Um, there's a fight it, 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 in, in, the, in the jury room. He, he had a f fairs. Uh, th there's 
a white woman complaining about having to go back to her business. Cisco's dad's like, girl, I got one too. What are you thinking? You aren't the only one here with the business, Miss White Lady. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And there, then we meet the young man with the mullet. These are some very interesting 12 jurors. We got Les Nesma, <laughs> Vicki Lawrence, the radio jockey, mullet, white lady, Cisco's dad, a black, black mama. woman, a black, black mama. mama crocheting, and JB. And then we've got a couple real old white men. Real old. Um, What's that you say? And the mullet is just like, you all just want to see him hang. He's feeling very much like projecting, I think. I felt projection. Mm-hmm. So we go back to, D- to the DA's opening statement. And the the statement is that Mark and Becky were lovers and they conspired together to kill Cliff. Oh my gosh. That is very different than what we thought it was going to be. And so they go back to the jury room and they're like, well, why isn't Becky here? Well, they're trying Mark as a test, and they're going to see if they can get Becky after that. Right? Oh. That's all you got? Just oh. Well, I just think it's interesting there we that... Go. I, was, I was hoping to get a little... I, I just think it's to, interesting that... To pull a little bit more out of you. They're trying their best to, like, you know, pit these two and all of this, when clearly Mark, who is a, a former championship race car driver, mm-hmm. was just having a bad day, which led to another bad day. You know what? Which... Every time you say Mark, I just picture Brent. Like, any time I hear it of this, I just, Mark! Mark! Oh yeah. I'm sorry. You know, you sorry. know that musical did not age well. Um... <laughs> And it has a Pulitzer. <laughs> Maybe one day we will. Maybe. For all the I want we a, do. I want a Peabody. That's Peabody, what I want. Peabody. Give me a Peabody. You, you want a Peabody. Lord or Edward R. Works. Murrow. I'll take that. Please. Give it to <laughs> me. For our cutting edge journalism. Give it to me. Right On commentary. Give it to me. Oh, God. So, the we, we find out, we're back in the courtroom, we find out the bartender never saw them together, right? <gasps> Fenton right. Harris definitely saw them together. But right. the bartender, before that night, had never seen Becky and Mark together. Okay, good. So, it's, it's, it's back on track. It's back on track. They've never met. So, JB's like, well, why the charade in the bar then? Well, we find out that Detweiler or Cliff... Always come into that bar. Oh. Always. And then we, we hear from the fisherman who says, Cliff definitely had a temper. But, but but when he left, he was not armed and did not have a gun. Oh. Well, but where, 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 where did Cliff, where did this gun come from? And there was only one shot fired and the nitrate test showed, uh, Cliff's hand right. and Mark's hand were on the gun. Because oh, it was self-defense, right? Self-defense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then then, they're, then everybody's kerfluffling again in the jury room. The radio host's like, well, somebody else should take over this. And everybody's like, no, no, no. JB's doing a fine job. We may not, we may not agree, but we're kind of enjoying this. Yeah. Th- th- see, they're having the same reaction we have watching uh-huh. it. Yep. Well, now they get to the mullet mentions that wimp of a neighbor. Wimp being gay. 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 <laughs> well, dear, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cliff's car was just blocking my driveway and I couldn't get in. And he had such a temper. I would never bother him. And if it if I just wait a few more hours, it wouldn't have been Cliff's body they were dragging out of there, sweetie. Bravo. Give him that Emmy right now. <laughs> Where's that Schlosker? <laughs> I deserve it so much more than Abbott Elementary. I agree. I agree. Wait, no, I, I don't agree. Have you watched Abbott Elementary? I have. I'm just do, joking. Do you like it? <laughs> yes, I do like it. Does it remind joke. you of our elementary school a little bit? Yes, actually okay. it does. Um, a lot, actually, a lot. Because like... I, I had 
I had uh, the redhead Italian teacher for um, seventh grade math. <laughs> yeah. I, like I had her for seventh grade math. Yeah, I read does it does actually remind me a lot of it, which uh -huh. is it is fun, but also it's it is a little weird because you're like, it oh, did we go to a weird school? We did, yes. <laughs> but ours had money, which is makes it completely different. Like yes, very different. We, dear listeners, we were in the county school system, which was segregated from the city school system but segregated being the literal word we want to use yes yes, yes. Back, back, back in the 50s 60s it was segregated um however due to busing it was 40 percent black 30 yeah. percent black yeah like yeah. like it, it was it was which dear listeners i say busing it's a good thing they've studies have actually found that when you bus students around and mix mix up the populations it makes both the more affluent and the lower affluent kids score better in general on just tests, right? Like, and, you know, just be better humans to all together. Just be better because they're exposed <laughs> to differences. Except for the ones that pull them out and put them in private school. <laughs> Girl, remember that? God. <laughs> which, which one are you talking about? Uh, the eye doctor. The eye doctor's son. Oh, did he get? Oh, oh, that one. Yeah, the, the white one, not the black one. No, the black one. Oh, the black one. Did he get? Did he get yes, they, both, they both. They both put them up in Winston. Oh, you know what? You know what? Mm -hmm. That still didn't get him in the country club. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. It was not that kid's fault that he was so insufferable, right? Like no, I feel bad God. that. He was insufferable, but it is just it the is whole. Weird. But the whole family was pretty. The whole family was insufferable. Just, I mean, it's just a when you're trying so hard to be this whatever they're trying to be, it's just oh boy. Whew. Honey, yeah, boy. Mm. Looking, looking back on life. <laughs> so the DA's closing made it seem like it was a planned murder. Mark had the gun and just shot him. And, wow. And like, well, excuse me, hit him with the poker, then used the gun and shot a, shot one fake bullet to make it look like a struggle. Jeez. So we're we're back in we're back in the jury room, and JB believes Cliff had the gun. It's the one thing she absolutely believes, and the reason she believes it is. He was arrested previously and had an un unlicensed gun then. Oh, so okay. somebody could just like, you know, if they know where to get one, they can get one, right? Right, right, right. Gun lobby argument, yes. Yeah. So JB, JB's like, he struggled for the gun, but he had an injured shoulder. It's very weird. So so we, we go to the doctor's testimony, and he's like... Mm -hmm. The the shoulder was hurt, and at one a.m. his wife died. And if he had just mm -hmm. stayed around, um, maybe he could have alerted the nurses to come in there faster. I know save. he has to live with that. He lives with that guilt you now know, forever. What kind of a shitty hospital. Do do you, do the nurses not come immediately? I mean, the two of us know this because we're hospital kids, but like, like they the. the that those things start beeping. Like, what would you? How could he have alerted them faster than the machine? They would have kicked him out of the room. You're, sir, you're in our way. We can't get the crash cart in here. What are you doing, sir? Lord yeah, I, I ain't got no answers for that. White folks' answers. That's what white folks. Is. White folks. <laughs> so we find out that the nitrates were on his left hand. Okay. And that that was the hand, you know, with the gun. And I don't know what the hell. Nitrates on left hand. The hand with the gun. Well, there, it's it's back when they were talking about the fact that he had the broken collarbone and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're back in the jury room, and, Jay, and Vicky Lawrence is just fed up. And JB also believes the hotelier. Oh. 
but it just seems odd to kill Cliff, right? Like, that's the one thing she can't get over. It just seems odd to kill him. What what would they gain from killing him? Okay, makes sense, makes sense. And then JB's like, there, there's a third possibility <gasps> that we've been missing. Oh, no. And it all comes from the neighbor saying, a couple of hours. Oh, I do remember him saying a lot of words, and especially a couple of hours. A couple of hours. Why you is that important? Saying, you weren't saying it correctly. How, say it Girl, it was a couple of hours. Okay. It was it was a couple of hours. A couple of hours, yes. Okay. Girl, that, it, that, that, little, that little mustache they made him put on. I know. Like at that ascot, was he wearing an ascot? It feels he like he was. should have been wearing an ascot. He was. It was the whole thing. It was the whole package. It all fall. It's all there. The coating was there. <laughs> Very clearly, the coating was there. Wimp, wimp. So is that what people used to mean when they called me a wimp back then? Okay, got it. You know what? Those people that called you a wimp. I want to see how many dicks they can tuck up their ass. I don't. <laughs> no, not at all. Especially now. Not at all. They're going to have IBS like you do. I don't want to see that. I don't actually have IBS. What is it that you have again? I don't have any of that. I say I've got colitis. I just, I do have a little IBS. Actually, I do have a little IBS, but not. You've it's said not, you had IBS before. I know, I know, I know. I, I, it's not actually been, like, diagnosed. <laughs> Girl, if your bowels get irritated, then you got IBS. If they aren't irritated. They're just mildly annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's on brand. That is on the brand. The fiber helps. Oh, Girl, nice. I got so... I had a co-worker today. Oh, jeez. You and your co-worker. And he was so frustrated. Like, he just... He goes off the deep end with something. You know, that is not how I roll. I'm like, uh, eh, shit happens. Whatever. Yeah. It ain't... There, there ain't, like, one little change. This person's going crazy. And I looked at him, and I was like, maybe you just need to get more fiber. Is he white? But we know he married a black woman. He says that to me sometimes. No. Uh... <sighs> not like an award, dude. That's not an award. Good Lord. No comment. <laughs> well, the verdict's in. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's got to be. Yeah. Not guilty on all charges. But the, but the jury was starting to lean more over than he was guilty. But So JB runs over the DA and it's like, hey, meet me in your office in 30 minutes and bring Becky Anderson, her lawyer. Oh, my gosh. Is Jessica going to do a booty call? Not with the perm that loose. <laughs> That's the best kind of booty calls, girl. Loose perm. Uh, yes. You know what? Every time that JB's not with the doctor... I miss it now. I know. Like, because I watched that the episode after been this. A thing. That should have been, been a thing. thing. They were so good together. It was a perfect, it was right there. It, it took him a couple episodes to actually get the, like, dynamic going, but now I miss it. And with Tom Bosley as their silly friend. I yeah. know. Third wheel, anyway. Tom Bosley. Tom Bosley, third wheel. Tom Bosley, third wheel. <laughs> Strawberry preserves. Anyway. <laughs> well. So they're they're on the office, and there's just a southern lawyer in there too. Because he's just a southern lawyer. Because the state of Maine has a lot of them. <laughs> and we find out that JB supposes that Becky killed her husband in uh, self defense. What? Because when Becky was killing her husband, her Mark was at the hospital. Oh, okay. And his wife. Wait, 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 wait. What? Well, you see, Mark need an alibi. And who else could he call but Becky? <gasps> A double murder? The car accident, you see, was deliberate. <gasps> he was a race car driver. And he just wanted to offer and get the money and have Becky. I just oh, thought he was having a bad day. That's all I thought it was. Also, was it... just an aside, Becky's lip color, 
her feet. I, yeah, she actually looked pretty good. That like that, funny. that, it was like, I think it was Tangerine Twist from the previous episode. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was it was red-orange. It was, it was a red-orange. <laughs> it was fierce. It, <laughs> when you said it, I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Do you think you, I'm wrong? No, it's just that you saying tangerine twist, it like it affects nerves in my body for some <laughs> reason. I don't know why. It just does. <sighs> I feel I feel like in this particular episode, uh-huh. if people if people don't listen from the beginning, they're gonna get very like, what oh, yeah, is it's, going it's on with be, these oh my two? God, my, my eyes start to fall asleep. Here we go. So we're almost there, girl. We're almost I know. So that like JB's like Cliff found him there alone, found Mark there alone. And Becky's like, that's not how it happened. <gasps> Becky. So the DA cuts a deal. Becky says it was self-defense. Mark had gone to kill his wife. He came in crazy with the gun. She hit him. Um and like he killed his wife by pillow. Came home. They cleaned all up. Then the, they the called D- the police. The, the DA says, you know, I'll need her to testify. And the Southern lawyer says, I think we can arrange that. She'll be there. <laughs> Thank you, Foghorn. J- J- I say, I say, I say, I say. <laughs> JB leaves and uh, Mark's there. And he goes, I'll always remember you. Well, I think you will. Doo-doo. Oh, he's arrested. Doo-doo-doo. Doo-doo-doo. Wait, 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 wait. Doo-doo-doo. That's a very different ending. Can you if they had cut it ten seconds early? That would have been a very different ending. Hey, babe. Yes. Did you find yourself in this George world? No, did you enjoy this episode? I give that to Vicky Lawrence because, <laughs> dang it, she needs it. She was live doing a live performance at Hickory not too long ago. Coming out of the dark. <laughs> That's a night the lights went out in Georgia. Oh my gosh. This, uh... <laughs> anyway, did you enjoy this episode, Mame? Yes. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I did too. They're all stupid, but I love it. I love it so much. Hey, Mame. Yes. Why don't you tell our dear listeners where they can find you? Sure, sure. Sleepy Mims, we got you. Hello, dear listeners. It is I, your favorite relation, Auntie Mame. Uh, you can find me on the social media at Auntie Mames with an S, <laughs> courtesy of Mims. You can find me in real life performing with the Villain Theater Improvised Comedy Theater in Miami. You can find me hosting amazing colossal karaoke every Thursday night at Kill Your Idol on South Beach. And you can find me hosting the Black Market Festival every other month in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And lastly, you can find me guest hosting on the It's Happening Out television show every other Wednesday night at 9 p.m., which you can find at the It's Happening Out apps or It's Happening Out on YouTube. How about you, Mims? That was fantastic. You must have written it down first. Hey, y'all. I'm the Divine Miss Mims. You can find me on everywhere at Divine Miss Mims. Hey, Mame. Yes, dear. Did you know this is a podcast? I had a feeling. Did you know that we have a Patreon? I'm if not you sure. If you go to Patreon.com, Mims and Mame, you can throw us some money. Hey, Mame. Yeah. Did you know that like this podcast, we've got another podcast? Really? It's called Baking Sugar. It's a designing women podcast. Hey, Mm. Mame. Yes? Did you know that we have merchandise? What? I know, right? Nobody else does either. (laughs) Dear listeners, if you go to MimsandMame.com, you can buy us a nice shirt. I did plug the Mims and Mame today on the uh, TV show. Oh, did you? Good. Good. You should do that every time. I know I am. I'm going to start doing it. Hopefully you do it short. Like very short, just like. Are you making fun of my height? No, I'm making fun of your verboseness. Ew. Yeah, no. Yes, I love a verbosado. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> babe, I am done with you. Why don't you say goodnight, babe? Good night, babe. Bye, y'all. <laughs>